we are very tired. We were eight uh, hours there. Uh, we didn't get any information what happened, only what we could find on internet. We sat there and we with no careful, information. They just came and uh, they, uh, first of all, they took the, I think they, they took the, uh, the, the guy, the journalist, uh, out from the plane and then they started disembarking the passengers. And, and then we were all questioned and, uh, not, not questioned, like uh, checked and uh, waited in lines and so on. Uh, it's not normal. You can, you can have this, uh, this power to do this. And I think uh, our government should not accept that. And it should be uh, some uh, sanctions about uh, Belarusi to have uh, doing that. They can pretend there is a bomb alert to stop your plane. So for sure it was uh, not true. The dog was more here to, to cover their, uh, their excuse. But uh, the, the fact are they just wanted to arrest a mine. So they, uh, they impacted the day of all of uh, more than uh, hundreds of people. Welcome back to Quick Take Charge. I'm Tim Stanovec. And I'm Jennifer Zabasaja in New York. Now, the other top story of the day. Flights are being redirected to avoid Belarusian airspace after the government in Minsk forced a Ryanair plane to land and arrested a journalist on board. The European Union will consider further sanctions against Belarus when its leaders meet in Brussels later today for the start of a two-day summit. Bloomberg has learned potential measures could include suspending flights over Belarus and banning the country's national airline from landing at EU airports. On the phone with us to discuss is Bloomberg's Alberto Nardelli. He's in London and he focuses on European political reporting, including security and sanctions. So, Alberto, thank you so much for joining us today on this top story. Uh, so one problem that we have right now is Belarus is already so heavily sanctioned. So what other retaliatory me uh, measures could the European Union uh, consider in, in terms of Belarus at this point? Well, I think the immediate measures that we might see are the ones that you just mentioned. So European leaders tonight, when they meet, the measures that they will look at immediately are things like suspending uh, flights of all EU airlines over uh, Belarus, banning uh, the Belarus national carrier Belavia from landing in EU airports. And also, crucially, they could also suspend transit, including ground transit, mm. from Belarus to the European Union. So those are the immediate measures. And then they are also very likely to call for an inquiry from the International Civil Aviation Organization. And whatever that inquiry finds could lead to further measures further down the line. Alberta, how might more sanctions change Belarus's relationship with, with other countries uh, outside of the EU? Um, I think that's a very good good question because what we've seen with the, the EU has already imposed three rounds of sanctions right. on nearly 100 individuals. I think 88 is the exact figure. And they were already planning a fourth round of sanctions in June. And what we've seen is that this has made Belarus get closer and closer uh, to Russia. So I think that relationship is going to keep getting tighter and tighter. We've already seen this morning the Russian foreign ministry has backed Belarus and the actions that it that it took. And until that relationship loosens, then, you know, it's very difficult for the European Union to, to do anything substantial because while Belarus is a small country, Russia isn't. Right. And Alberto, that, that's a good point, because um, how are how is the European Union going to uh, commit any sort of sanctions, any sort of measures against the country if Russia is not on board with them? I mean, how likely is it that we're actually going to see something come out of this? Um, I think we'll definitely see action in the sense that there's lots of anger. So we'll see action on uh, air travel and possibly transit, including, say, uh, commercial uh, transit. So that would have an impact on the country's economy. However, the country is already heavily uh, under sanctions and its economy isn't doing great. But until it is propped up by Moscow, it makes the impact of sanctions very limited. Also consider in terms of actual measures on individuals like asset freeze and travel bans, you know, the vast majority of the country's government and political leadership is already under sanction. So they can't, you know, you, it's hard to raise the stakes on that specific front. 
and other types of measures currently aren't under discussion. Mm -hmm. Hey, Alberto, give us the latest on, on, on everything that, that we know about the detained reporter. So we know very little in terms of uh, where the reporter is, uh, where they're being treated. Obviously, there's very little information and news coming out of uh, Belarus. Uh, and there's still little on the reasons. We, we, we can speculate on the reasons. Obviously, the platform that uh, he was an editor of, Nexa, has had a huge impact in Belarus, you know, it has about 2 million subscribers. It's a country of 9.5 million people. It played a key role in, the, in covering the elections, a key role in organizing the protest. Some say the scale of protest wouldn't have been possible without uh, this uh, media platform. Uh, so you can see why the Belarus government didn't like him and the platform. Still, it's a very bold move, an unprecedented move, too despite all those reasons. Yeah. Bloomberg's Alberto Nardelli in London. Alberto, thank you so much for taking the time and for joining us on this. Really appreciate it. Well, joining us now is Frenak Viacorka. He's a former journalist who's now an advisor to the opposition. He joins us from Vilnius, Lithuania. Thanks so much for being here, Frenak. Really appreciate you taking the time. I, I just want you to give us your reaction to the events as they've unfolded over the last 24 hours. Uh, it's shocking. Uh, after yesterday, no one no one can feel safe anymore, neither in Belarus nor in the European Union. Yesterday, when I was talking to Raman, uh, he shared his concern about possible um, uh, people or spies who were following him. I didn't believe him. I thought, oh, perhaps he's very cautious. But later, a few hours later, we found out that that was the part of the whole operation in order to detain, to arrest, to capture him. Unfortunately, we don't know where is he right now. We are in touch with his parents. We are trying to, to organize lawyer for him. But uh, I, I, I'm afraid to think about what, what they do to him. Because usually, uh, not detention is the worst, but what's happening after detention, the interrogation. They're trying to get so much information from him. They're trying to put pressure on him. They're trying to force him to, to admit in all crimes he never committed. And I, I, I will be making all possible in order to release him and all other political prisoners. Wow. So, Roman, you've been in contact with him and you continue to be. So I was in touch with him until until everything happened, until this incident in the airspace that uh, did take place. We knew that his girlfriend is also arrested. And I think here Lukashenko's regime showed its nature. They are not, they do not care about international norms, rules, standards. They are ready to violate all possible uh, laws in order to persecute their opponents. But also it shows that Lukashenko hates journalists, reporters, bloggers, because they tell the truth and they give people alternative information. Yeah, Fernak, we were going to ask you about that. I mean, why why, Lukash why would Lukashenko go to such drastic lengths to uh, detain this journalist? I mean, he potentially is putting the lives of 171 of the passengers who were on board at risk. But um, why take such drastic steps, do you think? Exactly, exactly. Uh, he captured the plane with 170 hostages in order to arrest 26 years old Kai, the blogger from the internet. It's insane. Why he does this? Perhaps he wants to show the power. He wants to show that he is in control. Perhaps he wants to show his attitude to the international rules, to the Western community. Like, look, I don't care what you think. You will, you can't do anything to me. I can do what, whatever I want. If I want to stop your plane, commercial jet. I will take my fighter jets and I will do whatever I want. So I think uh, this is also the result of impunity and lack of international action. Because during last week, we had the biggest internet portal was closed to the BY. Uh, the political activist Vitoly Tashurak was murdered in the prison. And finally, Ravan Protasevich yesterday detained in the airspace. So this is the result of impunity. And the international community is also responsible for, for, for what's happening in Belarus right now. So immediate action needed. So what do you want the international community to do, Fernak? What do you want to see? First of all, international investigation. What really happened in the airspace in Belarus? Second, to punish all perpetrators. Lukashenko, his cronies, all those involved in special operation, including KGB agents who were accompanying uh, Raman on, on that um, uh, flight. We want sanctions on companies, businesses, uh, oligarchs who are financing the regime and financing the violence against peaceful protesters. We want international conference on crisis resolution. 
because all the reaction on this uh, uh, on this X incident um, yesterday it's not enough. We must understand that this is the part of the wider, broader humanitarian political crisis. We need to get Belarus to new free and fair elections. And this high-level conference with Rapp, with Johnson, with uh, Merkel, with Macron, with the Kurds, uh, they all together must gather at one place and to discuss how to solve Belarus crisis. Because at this moment, it's not domestic crisis of one European country. This is the crisis which harm the whole European security. And for not how how do we how does that happen? I mean, what is it that the opposition and and your um, colleagues? I know you work with Svetlana. Uh, you're the senior advisor with her. Um, what is it that you guys want to see done now? I mean, how how do we prevent something like this from happening again? We already discussed today. We have to uh, strengthen our security. Uh, we realize that we are followed everywhere, not only in Belarus and even being in Lithuania in European Union, we can't feel safe. I think uh, all of us should take specific uh, additional measures in order to save our uh, equipment, computers, smartphones. Uh, we have to be very careful when, when traveling and to avoid traveling over Belarusian airspace. And in general, we must revise um, uh, our, our approach, our, our rules, our standards, not only security protocols, but in general our activities. Because from today, from yesterday, Lukashenko is not just another dictator. He's the terrorist who is uh, capturing um, commercial airplanes. And we should uh, position Lukashenko on the international arena in such way. He usurped the power, he captured the plane, he put lives of hundreds of people in danger. Are you concerned that stepped up sanctions from the EU and potentially action from the international community could drive Belarus closer to Russia? And, and why is that a concern? I, I don't think so. We made analysis, we checked, there is no uh, real arguments to speak that sanctions will force Belarus to Russia. Belarus is already in Russian hands, very dependent on Russian economy. 50% of trade is uh, with Russia. So additional sanctions on the specific branches, such as oil uh, products or potash, will not uh, uh, put Belarus closer to Russia. It's already very, very close. But these sanctions, specific targeted sectorial sanctions, will eliminate, will cut sources of funding for Lukashenko and his cronies. It's very important to send the right signal to Belarusian society that the violence will not stay unpunished. Well, we really appreciate your time on this story. Fernak Viakorka, thank you so much for joining us and for bringing us the latest from over there.